Alrighty, this video is going to be a doozy. We are metaprogramming model validations with Rails, and you can only find that here on Corey's Corner. But first, you need to go over to thoughtsandfitness.com and start building your dream body. For only $7 a month, you can get access to a whole lot of workouts, high intensity infill training, strength and conditioning, functional movement, and a whole lot more. So head on over to thoughtsandfitness.com. All right, let's start this video. So if I go over to backslash daily workouts, backslash new, and I create a new workout, I can create one without there being anything. And then that is obviously bad because it shows up on our home screen and it just looks like crap. So we need to add model validations to make sure that our daily workouts focus, it's lift, it's sets, and it's reps are all present upon creation. The easiest way to do that is through what are called model validation. So we're going to be working through some test driven development at first. So we are in our daily workouts test folder. This was created when we created our model. So we can do def setup. I don't know why it does that. Um, we're going to set it at daily workout equals daily workout dot new. And then our focus going to be set to um, I do explosive power all the time so it's gonna be set to rugby fitness and then we're gonna just gonna do this we're gonna do test should be valid do cert at daily workout dot valid question mark so the valid helper is called on any active record object and it makes sure that all the attributes in that object are indeed valid. So we can set parameters to make sure that our record fits a certain, um, our record's attributes fit a certain um, dimensions. So we can do rails test models. This is going to be green, obviously. But then we need to write a test daily workout. What the heck happened here? Oops, sorry, that was left over when I was experimenting. You shouldn't get that problem. So we have daily workout should have focus, do, and we're gonna go into our daily workout instance variable and we're gonna set it equal to at daily workout dot focus. We're gonna set that equal to a blank string and then we are going to do assert not at daily workout dot valid question mark. So the assert not is like an unless operator. So if it is valid, we'll return false and our test will fail. If it is not valid, assert not will make it turn true and our test will therefore pass. So we test our models again. And we're going to get a failure. Expected true to be nil or false. So we got true because the model is valid and we expected a false value. So we need to make this by using the validates helper, which takes a key, I mean a symbol of the attribute. We're going to pass just presence equals true. And then our test should be green. <clears throat> All right, and then you see if we come up here, we go to our daily workouts backslash new, we try to submit this. We go our focus cannot be blank, so we'll add this. Focus in here, so rugby fitness. And if we create this, okay, it works, but we still, we still have our lifts. We need to require a lift to be there. Unfortunately, this is a has many. And has many, um, nothing exists in the database on this table. All the references exist on the other table. And I'll show you what I mean right here. now. If I go to the schema, I look, I see our at daily workouts. There's nothing to do here with the lifts. All of the workout between the relationship between the daily workouts and the lifts is stored with this daily workout ID property, which is required, which we're actually going to require on every lift. So when the database wants to get all the lifts from a daily workout, it just looks for all of the lifts with this daily workout ID and matches them together. But anyway, 
So we're done testing our daily workouts, but we want to test our lifts. So our lifts have three attributes, um, four attributes actually, that we want to test. And all these tests are very similar. So we could do this. We'll do setup, do. So setup can be a method or a block. Um, makes no difference. At lift equals lift dot new uh, name, I believe. Actually, I forget what the, because I'm rebuilding this application a few different places. Yeah, it is name. So it's name. Uh, we'll just do deadlift. Can you know my favorite workout yet? So sets, we'll do five reps, three, and then for our daily workout ID, we will set it equal to the ID of one of our fixtures. So daily workouts and our fixture name, which is one, or we could do this at daily workout equals one, and then we can do this daily workout dot ID and we're just gonna want to do our test should be valid do assert at lift a valid question mark we'll test this bad boy right now it's going to be valid. So we're, we have four attributes we want to test. We want to test for the lift's name, its sets, its reps, and its ID to be present. So all these tests are going to look like this. So we're going to have name should be present do at lift dot name equals nil and assert we're going to do assert underscore not at lift dot valid. So all of these tests, um, they follow the same syntax where you have four lines of code and you do the same thing in each one. So when you, just like with a function, you have um, something that you're repeating all the time with metaprogramming. If you have something that you're repeating all the time, you can easily, um, not, well, not easily. That is a place where you can use metaprogramming which is code that writes code. So we're going to do that right now. So first we're going to set our lift attributes. We're going to do lift attributes. And that is just going to be a string of symbols. It's going to be name, sets, reps, and then daily underscore workout ID. And then we are going to do lift underscore attributes dot each do attribute actually I'll just keep that short attri now we'll do attribute and end so then we need to do test and we'll do oh sorry double braces attribute is present do and then um, what you would think we could do is we could, we think we could do this. We could do at lift dot attribute and use our attribute helper, but that doesn't work. So we need to use eval. So we can do eval and actually let me finish this just so this makes sense equals nil. So we would loop, loop through, um, each of the attributes and then we would set the attribute on that lift equal to new, but th this does not work. You can run the test and take my word on it. You're going to get an error here. Um, it just doesn't work. So we need to use eval. So let me open up some Rails documentation. I mean some Ruby documentation, eval. So I've done some metaprogramming videos on eval before and it really, it takes in a string and then it runs that string as code. So we're treating data as code. So you see in this example, um, this is actually a pretty shitty example. But if I just did, let me come to the console, the Rails console. So I do Rails C. So if I do eval, I pass in a string, puts hello world. 
eval is going to take whatever's in this string and it's going to interpret it as Ruby code. Um, so that's really simple. Play around with it. But anyway, what I can do is I can do eval. And I can do at lift dot hashtag attribute equals nil. And then I can do assert underscore not at lift dot valid question mark. Exit out of the Rails console. We do Rails test models. You see our tests are gonna fail. So we have seven assertions and three failures. So oh wait, let me do this. Lift I don't know which one passed. I think, oh, um, yeah, we'll see which one passed. Lift sets is present, lift reps is present, lift name is present. So those all failed. So I believe the um, belongs to attribute automatically requires the foreign key. Hmm. I'm assuming it does, yes. So yeah, the the but it's good to test anyway. So we don't need this. We're at our lift test. Um boom boom boom. So yeah, the 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 key with a um if there's a key with the belongs to uh macro, it'll automatically test for validations, I guess. And we verified that by running the test. But anyway, we want these tests to pass. So we can just do ooh, could I meta program this too? I actually didn't. So I could actually do this. I could actually do these attributes. Then lift, uh, lift attributes dot each do attribute. And then I could do, I guess I could do eval validates colon hash. Well, I can do validates. I will do this attribute dot inspect comma presence true I'm not sure if this is gonna work so we might have to do it the old-fashioned way I just thought it out on the fly oh it did work all right so we would have in here we'll look at our code count sorry if I blew up your mic so here we would have four lines of code and we reduce that to ah uh, we didn't really reduce it wait ah uh, actually no you would want to do this the old-fashioned way i'm sorry so we're not going to count this so we'll do validates because you're going to have multiple validations on each model possibly and you can't you can't do that with your method that'd just be dumb so validates name is true validates uh, sets, presence true, and validates, reps, presence true. We'll run the test just to verify that these work the exact same way. But anyway, what I mean is, say you wanted to add like a maximum minimum on each one, it wouldn't make sense to meta program it like that and then have to rewrite the validation all over again. But anyway, so for each of these tests, so we have four properties. So each test is three lines. So four times three is 12. So we have 12 lines of code. But by doing it like this, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We reduced it to seven lines of code. But really, it's more like one, two, three, four, five lines of code, not counting the end statements. I mean, if you want to count those, you, uh, you can't, but it's five to seven lines of code we reduce our code to, and we kept our code dry, which is very important. Anyway, this was a pretty sick video. Um, I'm experimenting with metaprogramming and testing a lot, and hopefully we'll have some videos on how to test device authorization using metaprogramming. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video. I'm really glad I could share this, and I hope you guys learned something. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my podcast.